four, three, two. I got my announcer voice. Welcome back, everybody, to the How We Talk podcast. <laughs> it is fucking no, <laughs> it's not. You, <laughs> no, just, oh, stick with the Izzy voice. All right. What's up, guys? This is uh, Izzy from How We Talk. Uh, welcome back to another episode. Uh, episode number five. We're not going to label them anymore. Well, we'll label them, but we're not going to announce them anymore. No, but maybe I will. Or maybe you won't. Or maybe I won't. You're right. Um, this is our first dispute? This is our first dispute, dude. Can we bump nice. this on that one? Yeah. Nice. So uh, we're not going to announce it anymore. <laughs> but yeah, this is number five. But uh, dude, what's up? What's going on? How's how's your week been? It's been a while since we last you recorded. Know what? That's what I was I was going to tell you. Um, it seems like it's been two weeks. Has it been two weeks since we recorded? It seems like it's been two it weeks. It seems like it. But you know what that was? Because we had that special release that we right. had with uh, the Laura, Laura the Machuco Laura podcast yeah. episode. That's yeah. why. You guys got to check that out. That that story was cool. It man. was really good. You guys, if you haven't heard it, check it out. YouTube, Apple Podcast, Stitcher. Yeah. Check it out. Yeah, definitely, dude. How's your week been? Work? It's been good. Work. Uh, the uh, All-Stars with Vincent, you know, that was all week long. Uh Sadly to say that we lost yesterday. We got Did eliminated. You? Yeah, it's a two game elimination uh tournament and we got eliminated. Our mm. second game loss. Eh, it happens, you know. It's how, did, baseball. how did he take it? Well, it was hard on him. Yeah. Yeah, it was hard oh, on man. him. Because you know, he, you know, I'm not gonna get too much into the detail about it, but he uh he was uh he was pitching and they hit off of him and that hit was the RBI that <sighs> brought in the run to, to win the game, you know, walk off, you know. So I mean, it was a great pitch. The kid probably closed his eyes and just swung the bat, connected, and you know, hasta luego. Dang man, that's cool. I mean, he he had a good time. I'm super proud of him. You know, he made the All Stars first time in the league. So and, you yeah. guys are out? Oh yeah, we're out for the All Stars. We're out. Oh yeah. I mean, the season's over. That's it. Yeah. I get to clean out my truck or my car, get it washed up and detailed because no more take baseball your, until winter ball. Take your coach tag off for a little bit. Take the coach tag off. Nice. This is the last time I wear the hat, the shirt. Nice. Probably not. I'll probably wear it again. There's always next year. Yeah. Is that, isn't that how they say it? We'll yeah. get them next year. We'll get them next year. We'll, we'll get, get them next year, year, champ. Champ, yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> hey, as long as you say good game after that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all good. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. There's no all weird, good. funny stuff around there. Um, dude, I, I, did I send you a picture when I got the... <sighs> yeah, dude. Yeah, uh, man. Your uh, got... root canal. Yeah, I had a little minor surgery. That's crazy. Dental surgery. I had a uh, infected abscess, and I looked like a chipmunk on one side. Yeah. It was crazy, dude. I've never, I couldn't, it was so weird, like, like you just whistle, you know, you pucker your lips, you whistle. I couldn't even do that. You suck a straw, you drink out of a straw, I couldn't even do that. It was so weird. How, we I got, mean, that, that just... You just got it because it was an infection. Did it you, was an infection, but I don't know what something? infected Did you put it? your mouth somewhere where you weren't supposed to put your mouth? Nah, man. I don't do that anymore. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. That was back in the day. I was young and I needed the money. But <laughs> <laughs> nah. nah um, but yeah, we got that taken care of, dude. So this face is back to normal. That's good. It's my money maker. It is your money maker. Kind of. Kind of. But, you um, know, at least dude, you took care of it. Yeah. Did you see that? <laughs> Did you see that video of that FBI guy? No. That FBI uh, break dancer guy? No. Did you see it? No. No. He's just FBI. Oh agent. yeah, with a bullet was, shot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He was break dancing and he yeah. did a little backflip and the he, his gun fell out. Oh, he went what? to go pick it up, but he picked it up by the trigger. And he shot somebody. And he shot somebody in the leg. No the leg. leg. Yeah. FBI agent. FBI agent. That dude's getting former FBI agent. Well, no, he's still he's still really? an FBI agent, dude. Damn. But he's getting charged with a second degree assault. And then the guy that got shot is getting beer for life at that bar. Hey, he deserves it. <laughs> he deserves it. He wins. That's Damn, crazy. I didn't know how to hear about that. Yeah. Really, really weird. But I guess those hips don't lie. <laughs> those, those hips don't. Hey, dude, he, he, he did a backflip and he kind of landed it. Yeah. But I don't know if he was drinking, but it, the gun fell out. That's what. No, nah, yeah, I didn't hear about that. I don't watch so much of the. No, you don't. TV. News. TV. News. Yeah. I got to get oh. back on it. Nah. No? Nah. Uh, I'll just wait here. I'll get really? the update from you. I'll give you... I'll Once give a week, I'll get my weekly, update from here. Weekly stories, yeah. weekly updates. Yeah. Yeah, but that's about it, dude. 
Uh, week's been busy with work and healing. Right. Yeah. Dude, you know what? There was a, a couple weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, that I went out to um, to downtown L.A., to go, uh, I think I, I think we talked about it, but we didn't get we didn't I didn't tell you anything oh, about that right. weekend. The that food? smorgasbord. Yeah, yeah, remember yeah. Remember that? Okay. Well, we said something last week in in one of the podcasts. I think it was Laura's podcast. We were talking about something, and and um and it it brought it brought it back to this uh something that had a story that happened over there, but I just forgot to tell you, and I just remembered again. And I'm like, I gotta tell you. You got in a fight? Yeah. No, no, I didn't get in a fight. Oh. It, was, well, it was over a chicken drum drumstick, you know, but you know. Whatever I want, hot wings. I have hot wings. You know my favorite. Yeah, I knew. But um, no, dude, this was. I mean, this is totally off topic, bro. But I remember, and I had to tell you. All right, there was um. There we're walking down the street, uh, at the Smorgasbord. I forgot the name of the place. Some kind of a building. It's a new building over there. Smorgasbord. We'll call it the Smorgasbord building. (laughs) But uh, they have some stores. It's kind of like a downtown street area, but it's closed off. So you have to. You know, drive in, park, and then they made it look like a downtown. Pretty cool. You should check it out. Um, we're walking by this store, and we seen this little kid just crying, dude. Balls out, crying, dude, crying. Mommy, mommy. His balls were out. His balls were out, crying, dude. He didn't have any of the, the, the diapers. They just, no I diapers. Cochino. He was just crying, dude. Just llorando, right? Uh, I saw security started, you know, flagging him down, and I'm like, hey, you know. So the security comes over, he and then lost. he was lost. Well, yeah, obviously, right? He's a car for his mom. And uh, and then I started looking around the stores. The stores were open, and some ladies just walking around. You know, dad's on his phone. That lady's walking around, and she's, like, looking around. And I go, hey, uh, are, are you missing a kid? She's like, I'm not missing him. He's right there crying. I'm like, well, he thinks he's lost, so you should go check. Wow. She's like, why? Well, I'm not missing him. And okay. she probably updated her Instagram like this Mexican just trying to probably. school me on yeah, but I was being just like, a parent. I'm just trying to help you out here. Like wow. you don't you're the one that lost your, your child for a moment, but in that split moment, do you know what could have happened? Yeah. A lot real. of things could have happened in that split moment. For real. But she re- the way she reacted was like, if I'm the asshole. Kidneys on the black market. Exactly. All that. Balls. <laughs> on the black market. Right. All that. Anyways, just that's that crazy, that man. You, man. That's just you know, yeah. the irresponsible parents. I see. Well, sometimes I, I trick out my son. Like, I'll get off the car before he does, and I'll duck. And that fear on his face, like, oh, where did my dad go? Yeah. You know, and I'm like, nah, I'm just joking with I you. I love Because I'm always going to be there. Like, yeah. heck no, man. Oh, it's yeah. crazy. Yeah. To lose a Wild. child, I mean, I mean, mm-hmm. my heart would drop if I did that. If I Wild. Didn't have to. Anyways. Yeah. Um, just but share speaking, that. Of, speaking of kids, our next guest, or actually... Tonight's guest right. has one of the coolest kids at my mom's uh, daycare. Shout out to uh, my mom, Abby, and her daycare. There you go. Little, uh, little hearts and minds. I bet you didn't know it had a name. No, I didn't. No. <laughs> Abby's, Abby's little hearts and minds. Um, I call him Mace. I call him Mace, and he's a cool little guy. He's the coolest kid in that daycare. Yeah. Um, but tonight's guest is his father, uh, Fernando Vasquez. How's it going? He All is right. the uh, – I wrote this down so I wouldn't forget – Overall winner of the muscle contest at MPC in San Diego. Uh, he's a trainer. He's a father with Father's Day coming up. Um, also coming up is uh, his the competition at the USA is in Vegas, right? Correct. Nice, nice. Welcome. Welcome, dude. How's it Welcome. going, guys? Thanks for having me. How are you doing? Pretty good, pretty good. All right. How you feel? Alive, man. Yeah? Alive. Nice. I have my bang right here, so. There you go. <laughs> I, was gonna, I was going to ask you, what is that? Yeah, it's the bang. It's better than, better than Red Bull. Uh, look, look at my hands. I actually had some <laughs> coffee before this. And the and bang. <laughs> yeah, but I've, I've been with um, doing my check-ins all day today, so yeah. I went for my little real. I saw that. I yeah. saw that in your story, right? You so posted that, That'll take me, like, man, from anywhere from seven to eight, nine hours just to get through all that meal. So Damn. went to Starbucks to get a little pick-me-up. And then, yeah, on the way out, I'm, I'm going to grab a bang. <laughs> Is that like awake. a post drink right there, or post workout drink? Or no, no, just that that that's just like a, like a Red Bull. Oh, okay. post, Red post, Bull. Podcast. post podcast, post podcast, post podcast, no, pre podcast, pre pre podcast, pre yeah, podcast. There we go. That's a pre podcast drink. You got your pre workout for the for the gym. That is a pre podcast. Nice. Dude. Right on. This man. flavor's all right though. Sour sour heads. I like cotton candy better. Or pina. Where do you get those? Seven Eleven. Oh yeah. Five. Oh really? Can't go wrong. Yeah, they got BCAs in them. We got creatine. 
Yeah, you got a bunch of vitamins, man. You know, because you always hear about, oh, the, the energy drinks are bad for you. You shouldn't be drinking them. But I think it's like, they're, they're fine if you do it right. Yeah. I mean, don't yeah. drink every, six every, or seven every, of them, Everything's right? bad for you, you know? Well, yeah, everything's yeah. bad Arizona for you. Arizona green tea. Yeah, yeah there you go. <laughs> oh, is that what you that is? You drink them anyway, you know? Green tea. Right now, as long as it says zero calories for me, I'm drinking it. Yeah. I'm drinking it. I don't care. So, you know what? So, you are a, a professional bodybuilder. Amateur. Amateur. If if I place top two in, in, in July. Is that the USA's? That's the USA's. Okay. Then we get the pro card. Nice. Yeah. So, that, that's what so we're So, right now, for. you're an amateur yeah. bodybuilder. Uh-huh. Now, is there a difference between bodybuilding at, or fitness trainer or, or is it... The same thing because I know there's some people that don't want to categorize it as bodybuilding. bodybuilding um, I mean, when, when, once you're you're you're, you're, you're bodybuilding, a... then you're getting ready for shows. You know, mm-hmm. um, now you're just talking about like just trainers in general for for like oh, people that uh, trainers that train people. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. This is completely different. You know, two different titles. Yeah, two different titles. You got your personal trainer and then you got your competitor. You know, I, I would say I'm a mixture of both. Okay. Mm. You know, because I'm I'm, a comp- I'm competing and then I'm also training people in the process. All right. You know, but I think for me competing, my clients see what I'm doing. You know, so it's not like I could feed them BS. Right. Like do this, do that, do that, and then me going partying, or smoking, or doing whatever. You know, and yeah. then trying to tell them to do better. Right. You know, so them seeing me going through what I'm going through helps them. Yeah. Pushes them, letting them know they're not the only ones, you know. Right. Yeah, so. You know, I remember going into that 24-hour fitness right here in uh, West Covina, right off the, the freeway, the 10 and West Covina Parkway. Was yeah. That, was that what it is? Right by the courthouse. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. right by the courthouse. I remember walking in there years and, years and years ago when I used to work out. And uh, How many years? Years and years and years ago. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, kind of like that joke yeah. with the grandma joke. Which those, oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> exactly like that one. Oh. But um, yeah, dude, the, there was a trainer and, uh, and the, there was a dude there. Dude was out of shape, out of shape, right? And I'm like, oh, I wanted to talk to a trainer and see if I you know how much he charges and you know to get a trainer. Oh, he's right there. Wait, that guy right there? Yeah, <laughs> that guy right there's a trainer. Big dude, just out of shape. I'm like, nah, I'll pass. Round I'll, is a I'll, shape. I'll go, round is a shape. Round is a yeah. shape. Yeah. This one wasn't round. He was more like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, if you know, if I see that, how am I gonna get motivated from seeing this dude? That's, yeah, you that's know, true, man. Totally out of shape. I mean, now, yeah, he might know how to train me, but as far as the motivation, where am I gonna get that from? Right. Yeah. I'm have to really dig deep. I mean, he's not gonna he's not gonna be able to feed it to me, right? And right. that's where you come in. Yeah. Where you just said. You know, they they, they want to see, you know. Right. They want to see. They see, see seeing is believing, right? You know? Yeah, the results. Seeing is believing. You gotta yeah. practice what you preach. Exactly. Yeah. Unless you're a sensei, you know, been doing it for years, and you get that respect, and you can look however you want. Exactly. The, you, you got yep. those years under your belt. Yeah. You know? I've, I've I've been doing it for six years. Yeah. You know, but I'm I'm still learning every day. You know, so I don't I never say I'm the best, or that I know it all. You know, because every day you can learn something. You know. Yeah. So. Yeah. When you say you've been doing it for six years, that's how long when uh when you got in the gym and actually committed to that lifestyle, or that's a when good you question. started working that's out. That's actually a great question because yeah, um, six years ago is when I decided I'm going to start training people. You know, I wasn't committed myself. Okay. I'm not going to lie. You know, I was still going through my little struggles trying to figure out um, if this is what I really want to do. Cause basically, I, w- I went from working a, a nine to five to quitting, and then basically doing my certification it took me like six months, and then yeah, I went I went personal training. Yeah. And then in the in in like the first year, I mean, it was pretty rough getting clients and get, trying to see who you are. This is what you're doing. This is what you really want. Um, but yeah, man, six years later, here we are. We literally went from barely having any clients to reaching people worldwide you know yeah. it's crazy yeah it's crazy now as far as committed committed it's been two and a half years okay where i decided where i'm going to compete compete at this point you know okay so those, yeah, after those two and a half years everything just you know started getting better for me and this is this is 24 7 for you yeah every I day mean, aside from family and all that family mm-hmm. time e- even that. yeah even with them you know it's my my, my fiance understands yeah well when, well when she first met me she met me hot uh, training yeah you know so um, it, it's not easy being with someone who's, you know, always busy constantly, exactly 24 seven, you know, so I'm always on my phone. I'm always responding to clients. Um, but yeah, it's, 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 it's a busy lifestyle. 
very busy. And then, yeah, staying on top of my stuff, making sure I'm getting to where I need to with my goals, you know. Right. Yeah. Are you at a at a specific location? Yeah. Well, I'm right here in Covina, Anytime Fitness. It's mm-hmm. right off of Citrus and Badillo. Oh, okay. Yeah. But um, yeah, that's where I train all my, my personal training clients. And then I got the online clients. Um, that's what I was going to ask you. You said worldwide, so now you have an online? Yeah. I've, I've, I mean, I had clients from from different parts of the country message me on that app whatsapp oh yeah mm-hmm. yeah, WhatsApp. yeah you know like you have whatsapp you know i'm like what, what is that so yeah. i downloaded it and yeah and they're sending me their their progress pictures through there and all that. Like, yeah How i can't i can't text you because you're it's an international right you know so yeah through that app i was been so able it's to through the app because you can't text internationally uh-huh. so they do it through that i app. had some clients uh go to russia you know wow. they were in, in the service yeah so yeah they had to leave so then that that helps that, that help that app's been you know able to help them communicate yeah. with me nice yeah so you give them a, a regimen to stick to a, a workout plan and all that yeah so based on um i get everybody's current goal as far as their not the current goal their current weight and their goal um and then from there we put together a diet and then workouts either with their home workouts or gym workouts and then they follow that for the week and then on fridays today everyone's supposed to check in by 12 p.m no later not a second later not a minute later i need 12 p.m sharp it's going to hold them accountable, you know? Yeah. They they text me at 12 with one second over. I send the automated message, try back next week, you know? Damn. Yeah, I'm serious. Yeah, I don't, I don't mess around, you yeah. know? So they get that message and they got to wait so they don't get no updates. Now it's for the people who were on top of it and they're being proactive. If, if they're doing good um, or if they're doing bad, whatever it is, then I evaluate, you know, and then send them a new diet or keep the same diet. Um, and then they get their new, regardless, they're going to get their new workouts every week. As far as the diet, if I know they're not following it, why send them a new one if they can't commit to the original right, one? You right. know? So I need to make sure that they 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 exhausted any diet that they've been, I've, I've sent them. And then I feel comfortable right here. Now we're going to follow this. Um, but also it just depends on the foods too, you know. Some foods may not sit well with them. Some foods bloat them. Right. Um, but that's when they communicate with me. Hey, I'm feeling bloated today. Well, what meal is making you feel more bloated? You know, meal three, you know, well, what kind of veggies are you eating? Well, I'm eating asparagus, I'm eating onions, this and that. Well, why don't we try cutting that out that's at these veggies, you know, because some different veggies react different with different people. Yeah. You know, so um, same thing with different fats, you know, avocados or almonds may not sit well. So, man, feeling bloated is not the best feeling ever, you know. So yeah. it's just it's just constant, constant questions or um, adjustments that I'm doing for them. Yeah. Yeah. Now it, seems, it sounds like you're pretty, you're pretty strict on these, on these people, right? So, oh, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's kind of like going back to uh, some of the stuff that we've talked about Israel, uh, where a lot of people nowadays are just they make excuses for everything. I mean, mm-hmm. on myself, I, I do it myself. I, I make a lot of excuses, you know, oh, why aren't you working out? Oh, I got this and this and that. So, I mean, you're pretty much cutting through all that bullshit, right? Yeah, I don't, I, mean, I don't, no I don't sugarcoat anything. Um, I don't, I don't give in to the client, you know. Oh, this is too much food. You mind cutting the portions down? Nope. Oh, do I really need to eat this? Yes, you know. I have messages saved, you know, clients just telling me, oh, I'm doing everything I'm supposed to. And then I, I get to the extreme where I have them send me everything they eat for that day for the whole week mm-hmm. until the next chicken, you know. And then they miss a meal. I'm like, hey, why didn't you send me that meal? Oh, I, I forgot. I'm like, no, it's, it's you. You were needing that beforehand. Yeah. That's why you didn't drop the weight you were supposed to. And then it comes out. Oh well, sometimes I feel too full and I can't. I like, no, you need to follow everything. Yeah. You can't be mad or you can't be confused if you're not following everything 100. percent And then come and check in and tell me you're doing everything you're supposed to. Yeah. You know, I said, I've been doing this for six years, so I, I know when someone's lying. Right. How I, how are the results from the people online as opposed to the people that you can? Face Personal, um, I mean, honestly, I, I, I've gotten equal amount yeah. of, of results. It just, it, it really falls on the, on the person. Yeah. I mean, personal, I would say it, it's a little bit more effective only because they're there. Um, then you get that communication, you know? Um, but I mean, I've had some amazing online yeah. results. Yeah. Like, whoa, yeah. you know, but to have that willpower to do it on yourself without me next, that yeah. that just takes it to another level. Those are people that are really dedicated Exa- to it. Uh-huh, right? Exactly. Yeah. Like today I had one, um, she was 152 when she started, and then 12 weeks later she's down to 114. Wow. 
Wow. You know, so. And then in the midst of that, yeah, she was she decided she wanted to go vegan on me. So then I had to readjust her whole program. Yeah. Um, with four weeks remaining, and yeah, she kept dropping. She felt good, you know. So yeah, I get curveballs thrown at me. How do you feel about the whole vegan diet? To I mean, it's, I, to, to, to each to, to each his own. Mm-hmm. But I, me personally, I mean, go meat all the way. Yeah. You know, you're gonna you're gonna get better results for your muscles for growth mm-hmm. through meat. Right. You know? So like a protein. Exactly. Because now 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 you're you're incorporating. Um, more carbs with, with 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 vegan plans, you know, because people use different different sources of carbs for protein, like your beans and whatnot, you right. know. But now that's more carb than protein, so now you got to double up on that, or you know, um, so they use plants, you know. Just I I I, I don't know. For me personally, if, if you want to grow, you want to develop, you meet all the way it's the best way to go yeah what what do you do the most uh people who are just trying to get in shape and and healthy or or get into bodybuilding that, that's a good question um i get a lot of messages to train people to compete but i don't put up a front i'm not i'm not going to do something that i don't know i mean i can easily take their money and then try you know but i'm i, I do look for the you know, people's best interest so actually i send them to my diet coach hmm you know, I send them to him. Mm-hmm. Now, as far as working out, I mean, I I, ha- I, we, I do it where I send them. I send them to him for the diet, and then they come work out with me. That I'll feel more comfortable with because once the, the whole diet for competing is a whole different ballgame. You know, and then not to put somebody through that yeah. and to for them to, to go through that, to suffer, to feel everything you feel for competition prep, and then at the end just not – not be to your best full potential. I, I don't want to do that to somebody, you know. Right. So I'm more in the line of weight loss, right, um, getting people ready for whatever event, shredded you want to call it, you know, drop um, no, drop weight, drop body fat, just transform people, you know. that that That's my main thing. Yeah. You know, heavy people or skinny, um, skinny frames, body frames, they want to bulk up, you know, and that. But when it comes to competing, yeah, I, I, won't, I won't even touch it. Yeah. Yeah. Do you do you have uh you mentioned your um uh, do you say, did you say a diet? Yeah, I have a diet coach. A diet coach. Do you have what what other people do you have to do help you out? As far as your team. I mean, I I just have him. So when when oh. I when I decided I wanted to commit um there's teams out there, you know, and all that, but my thing is I mean, God willing, my my my. This was my thought. It was everything went well? I won shows. Were they gonna people gonna look at me? It's like, oh, it's because they're on this team, or is it because I did the work? Right. You know. So that yeah. that was my thing. So and um, my diet coach now. I mean, I I knew of him since I was in high school because he owned a supplement shop in Covina, nutrition for less. Um, so when I was ready to compete, I mean, I was looking at teams. I was looking at, at him. Um, and he didn't have any competitors on his page. I just knew he's been competing for years, you know, so I'm like, you know what, I'm, I'm just going to go with him. That way he can give me more attention as opposed to a big group. And then, cause once you do that, now you start favoring people and I don't want to get put in the right. back burner, especially because this is new to me, Yeah. you know, and if this was meant for me, then, you know, I, I want someone to give me the full attention. So that was my, my thought process going into this, you know, so I met up with him. He was up front, you know, and then yeah, that, that's how we started. So I've been with him for the last two years, two and a half years since I started. Is that now, because right now you're, you still have amateur status. Do you think once you become pro, you think you would, you would be building a team or you think you're going to go with what you, what, what, you know, take, you, take what is it? That saying, uh, go to the dance who here. What is that? I, 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 know, I, know what, I know what you're getting at. I, 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 I want to, but. I, I feel I'll still, I'll still, be, I'll still be me, yeah. you know. Be true to what what, what got me here, yeah. you know. Like I said, just com- doing the whole competition as far as coaching, that that's just a whole different. There's a science to that, like yeah. to the T, that I still haven't mastered. I I, I think it takes more years to develop a skill at that you know level. Mm-hmm. I I just yeah, I I probably wouldn't do it. Yeah. Keep it the same. Yeah, keep it the same. Yeah. Reach people on the on the regular base in days, well, regular base life, you know. Um, just trying to change their lives, transform, you know. So that that's what got me into all this, you know, trying to change myself. 
Um, so now I'm just giving back to the world, you know, good karma. Yeah. That that's that was going to be my next question. Um, what took you there? To be honest, when because I've seen I've seen your uh, Instagram and stuff like that, and I see your pictures, I'm like, man, these dudes are crazy, just yoked and just shredded, and like, I me personally, I can't go there. It's it's wild to me. What made you? want to go there what what took you to that six years ago when you started well in in high school i was always in, into sports um i wrestled i wasn't a stud as you would call it i wasn't the best yeah. you know but um i um both my shoulders kept dislocating so i couldn't wrestle anymore you know and that that kept me that gave me a foundation to stay out of trouble because i wasn't living with parents i was living with um my um all right this is this is confusing so i'm gonna try to say it slow this is my the lady who raised me right so her sister was my mom but i was living with her so her husband's her husband's sister's kids i was living with mm -hmm. so they were like in their 20s yeah you know so they didn't care what i did you know they said we're not your dad you do whatever you want you get in trouble that's on you so I felt wrestling kept me grounded, Yeah, you know. Um, so when I wasn't able to wrestle, I needed to find something, you know, to stay out of trouble. So then um, I got into to weightlifting. You know, I got into weightlifting. I went to 24-hour fitness right here in West Covina yeah, the by the courthouse. About, yeah, without a and then um, it's funny because one of, one, of uh, one of my classmates, she goes, man, you have a nice stomach. You should do bodybuilding competitions. I'm like, yeah. Yeah? She <laughs> goes, yeah, my, my uncle does them all the time at Venice Beach. You just put on the little underwear and you pose. I think you'll do good. Yeah. And that that's how it started. <laughs> you bought little underwear? That's how it started. It's, it's, so always, I, I it's went, always a girl, yeah. dude. There's always a girl. That's how it st yeah. So I went to the gym and I seen these two guys. One of the guys was went to my school the year before that. And then they were like, what are, what are you doing here? Well, I'm trying to bodybuild. And they looked at me, this little scrawny guy. Yeah. They were all big, you know, because they had already competed. Right. So they took me under their wing. Uh, my senior year, I went from like 140, no, 135 to about 2, 205 in six months. Damn. Just eating, eating. If you ask anybody, like, and, uh, um, was that, that was that lean or just bulked up? Just bulked up, bulked you know. Up. If you ask anyone that went to school with me, they would know me as the potato guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the potato guy. Because I would always, I had my gym bag and I just have a bunch of boiled potatoes yeah. and I just take the foil out and eat it eat my chicken breast and I have my tub of protein. I was always eating every two hours in the morning, first break, lunch, second break, you know, yeah. and then go to the gym. So for, yeah, I was doing that. So then, um, that, 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 that's how that all began. You know, obviously after high school life happened, got a job, I got my own apartment and then I was doing God knows what, you know? Mm -hmm. So then, but I was always still grounded working out into the gym, but I was never serious. A lot of partying, a lot of drinking, just, you know, yeah. teen stuff, 18, 19, 20-year-old stuff, you know. Right. Um, and then it wasn't until about yeah, 2012. From, so from 18 years old up until, what, 20, what, six years, 24, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, so from there, I mean, life happened with everything. I just decided, all right, I need, I need to find something again. So, yeah, so I was, I was, when I was saying earlier, I, I quit my job. Um, and I started taking courses to become a trainer yeah. to pursue that, you know, and then, yeah, that's how, that's how it all began. But I've always wanted to compete, but I just, to, to be in a competitor's mindset, you really need to sacrifice a lot. Yeah. And I wasn't mentally stable for it because I was still lost as to who I was, you know? Um, but then, yeah, one day, New Year's, my fiance was pregnant, you know, and I was coming home from i don't i don't know where the heck i was at i just know i was i was in the uber sun was out i'm like what the heck am i doing you know my fiance's pregnant i get to there she's outside she's like crying you know like mm. you need to figure out what you want to do you yeah. want to keep drinking is this is how you want to raise your son and i was like man yeah you're right you know i already have a one-year-old or, or uh, what was it how old is he at the maybe three you know this, this is like a non-go uh, no, no, non-stop you know ongoing thing so yeah the next day, yeah, I said, I'm going to stop drinking. I'm going to stop doing everything. And then I, I went back into the gym. I started dieting on my own. I was around 210 pounds at the, at the moment, at the time. And I got down to 185. 
and I just felt inside I needed something more. And I at that at that time at that point, I knew that I was ready to start competing. My mind was there. I I said I'm done drinking. I'm doing doing everything. So that's when I messaged my coach. But I just I left it in God's hands to put me in the right person's hands. Yeah. You know. So yeah. So now I'm two and a half years sober actually. Good for you. So that's good. My, nothing i haven't touched anything i haven't drank and i just been focused on 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 competing because yeah. in the midst of all that in the six years too man i was still doing whatever i was doing trying to train clients you know so like, and i was telling you you got to practice what you preach right you know so i'm over here doing my stuff still trying to train people and it just it was just back and forth back and forth you know um you, you can't take someone serious when all they're posting is, oh, I'm going out here, I'm going to this rave here, I'm partying here, you know, and all posting whatever, eating, yeah. you know. So it wasn't until, yeah, I got serious with the competing, uh, everything just started getting better, you know, and then more accountable, you know. Right. You know, reliable, sorry, more reliable. Um, but, yeah, so that that's how all that occurred, you know. Yeah. yeah. Now, would you say that you um – that you pretty much live in the gym, like that your most of your hours are done in the gym, oh, yeah. including you know training from your workouts. I mean, you're pretty much that's your office. What's yeah. what's a typical day look like? Me yeah. so, um, during during competition season, I'm up at four thirty. I get on the treadmill, depending on how long my coach has me on there for. Um, just, just we'll just say forty five minutes, and then after that. I hurry up, I get my food ready, I pack my meals, I go train clients from 6 to 10. Now, each hour, anywhere from 4 to 6 people each hour. And at 10 o'clock ends, then I get ready for my gym. I work out. So I start like around 10.30 up until 1, 1 1.30, I'm done because I still do cardio after. Um, Then I go to your mom's house, pick up little man. So then I have him go home then i'm back home then i'm cooking again for both of us because i need to eat he needs to eat and i need to take my meals for my evening you know so i get like three hours to do all that which is not enough time especially with the one-year-old you know so i'm i'm already exhausted by then praying to god he takes a nap (laughs) (laughs) by the time i pick him up he's already napped he's already (laughs) recharged um so then yeah five o'clock comes i'm back at the gym training clients until 9 p.m I get off at nine and then I get home and then I answer any emails, text messages from online clients. I have questions, personal training clients, and then I'm prepping again for tomorrow, cooking my meals. So I'm in bed by like 12 if I'm lucky. And then at 4.30 again the next day, Damn. same thing. So every day, every month feels like one long day during competition season. Yeah. Once I'm off season, then it's a little bit, it's slightly less hectic, but it's still... I mean, hours with training clients and all that is more, but I get to sleep in a little bit. I don't got to do my cardio in the morning. Yeah, yeah. I could do it after I work out, you know, so. How do you deal with the lack of sleep that when you're when you're competing, when you're training for the competition? Honestly, I, I, I ask myself that every day. Damn. Yeah. A lot, a lot of the bang? You know what? Surprisingly, <laughs> I don't I don't drink a lot of that. No. I don't. I yeah, it's funny. Yeah, I don't I don't drink that, but I do drink coffee every now and then. Is yeah. that pure motivation? I, I just I just it try is. to I try to stay away from it. Because if I drink coffee in the morning, my pre-workout won't kick in as hard when I take it. Because I already have caffeine, you know. So I just try to yeah, take my pre-workout and then that's it. And the evening comes, then if I need coffee, I'll drink it, you know. So I posted this um, this Starbucks drink that I that I, I make personally. It's only five calories. And I called it the Nando Special and I posted it on my IG story. Yeah. So then all my clients... That's the one that you posted today? Yes. Okay, I saw it. So then my clients were like, oh, can I have that? I'm like, yeah, man, there's no sugar in this, you know? Well, what is it? It's just a cold brew, two two to four Splendas, two to four pumps of sugar-free vanilla and cinnamon, right? Yeah. And dude, you won't even... But one client posted it on their story, so then I I just screenshot it for, you know, for the fun of it. and like, oh, look, this person liked it. Late For that whole week, I I even have it saved on my highlights. Yeah. People, person after person posting it, Nando special, Nando special, Nando special. I even have text messages from people going to, to local Starbucks <laughs> yeah, asking, asking for this, and they're the, like, the are Nando you talking special? about the Nando special? Nice. It went viral. <laughs> it went viral in a matter of like a day. Yeah. Next thing you know, yeah, people in different states 
for getting the, the Nando, Nando special. special. <laughs> I was like, what the? <laughs> yeah, to this day, people are posting the Nando special. Oh, I'm going to have to try the Nando yeah. special, dude. Five yeah, calories, definitely. tastes really sweet. And it yeah it d- doesn't come with all all those carbs all those sugars yeah. you know all those calories yeah. and you get in your fix, you know? awesome. it, it it blew up it was nuts <laughs> it was nuts That's cool yeah you know let me ask you those days that you just feel real lazy or just tired and you just don't feel the energy you don't have the energy to get out and work out but you know you need to work out yeah how do you do it how do you overcome that um I get like that a lot especially cause during during competition season um. I I look I look at the main goal, you know, and then I look at who's looking at me, you know. People are are, are waiting for me to post what I'm doing, when I'm gonna go on the cardio, you know. If I, if I'm on that treadmill at 450, you know, by uh by 445, I have people DMing me, hey, you're not on the treadmill, where are you at? I'm like, man, let me, <laughs> no, only two minutes late, you know. Yeah. But um, so yeah, so people, you know, they 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 they're relying on me to to to, to keep pushing because yeah. that's helping them push. You know, but the ultimate goal is to get that pro card. You know, I'm right. looking at the pro card. There's, I don't know when it's gonna happen, but you know, obviously, it it when when you when you step on stage, it's it's always beating yourself from how you looked last year yeah. or the last show. You know, but at the end of the day, you are standing next to guys. You know, right now, are those guys getting up when you're not? You now, so that that's in the back of my head. You know. So that that that's what keeps me going, and I at the I still have to beat somebody on that stage, yeah. even though I'm trying to look better than I did last year. I'm still I still have to beat somebody on that stage to get that pro card, you know. So I can't be lazy. I got to stay on top of it. There's days where I'm just I'm in the gym lifting, but I'm not there, you know. I feel like I'm just going through the most. There's no mm. there's no pump, as people would call it, you know. Yeah. Where you start lifting, and you like ah, oh, you feel that, yeah. you know. Yeah, there's nothing. So you're just there, and you're just dead, tired, exhausted. There's been times where I've been on the treadmill and I, I've, I've dozed off, but I just my legs just kept moving, <laughs> just just tired, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just it, it just comes down to how bad you want it. Right. You know. Damn. Do you do you think that um. Because there's there's a saying, and I'm probably gonna screw it up, but it's like, uh, look good, feel good, feel good, act good. It's kind of like this ripple or a domino effect. Do you think, or what are your thoughts on working out, releasing certain endorphins? I think, yeah, work, working out is a is a therapy, you yeah. know. Um, like example, that, now that you mentioned, look good, feel good. On was it Thursday or Wednesday? Um, one of my clients DM me. She used to train with me. Um, when I met her three years ago, she was really shy. She's about two hundred fifty three pounds. Um, when I met her, we finished off at one 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 ninety three, you know. But she's changed into a whole different person. So when I posted her, I wrote those exact words, you know, look good, feel good, you know, you do good in life, you know. That's just the way it goes. Now she's out. She's about to start selling houses. Never in her life did she think she would, because she was always shy, yeah. Yeah. She's timid about her weight, scared. She was depressed her whole life, you know. And the more stuff she told me, um, that was I was like, wow, you know. But now she, she's a whole different person, you know. So she loves the gym. The gym changes people, yeah. you know. Yeah. You you want you you want it. You're gonna have to want that change, you know. It's there, you know. But it just yeah, I, I feel that it's it can be a therapy for people, you know, to to release any anger. Um, you're looking in the mirror, you know, you're working now, you're seeing changes. How are you going to feel? You're going to feel good. Right. You're going to, gonna, you're going to be exactly addicting, you know, so you want to, want to keep doing good, you know, but then eventually the little devil comes, tries to bring you down, you know, what do you do at that point? You just got to remember why you started and you got to keep moving, you know, because right. well, this is life. This yeah. stuff's always going to happen, you know, so if you allow it to, to affect you, then you, you're not going to get anywhere with this. So that's how people fall off. You know, you just gotta you gotta find that you gotta find that home. Do you do you get a lot of clients that are dealing with like depression and stuff? Oh yeah, yeah, a lot. Uh huh. Anxiety. Some are going through. Some are going to therapy, and they've done so well with me that they they no longer go to therapy. You know, they're happy now. You know, they're happy. Um, they're doing a lot better. They're doing more in life. You know, so yeah, the the gym can change people. Yeah. 
I, I I think your diet has a lot to do with because um, we how we were talking about just uh, before we started we were t- uh, talking about like uh, suicide and all that. I think your your diet. I mean, I could be wrong. I, I don't work out. I don't. You know what I mean. But your diet and what you put into your body have a lot to do with uh, your mind and stuff. Oh yeah, you for know? sure, hundred percent. I mean. It's like you said, uh, it's the way you feel. And if, if you're putting all this bad stuff in your body, you're not going to feel good. So, so some people are emotional feel. eaters. Yeah. Like they're legit emotional eaters. Right. They, they're going through stuff in their life. And then what, are they, what do they resort to? Comfort food. Mm-hmm. Well, they start taking the chips out. They start taking the donuts out. You know, and then they start, okay, boom, they forget about whatever. But then yeah, later they feel oh, yeah. sluggish, you know. Yeah. Um, even with people that are dieting pretty good, you know, they just uh, some they resort to food, they resort to food to escape, you know, and um, that 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 pointed to disease, you know, to disease. So we can yeah, and it can affect a lot of people without them even knowing. Yeah, you know, they're 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 drowning in their own in, in their own sorrows, trying to trying to figure out what what can they do, what can they do, you know, but they're stuck, you know. Yeah, a lot of it has to do. I I believe it. Uh, um, not 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 speaking out, not not talking to your friends, and, and not you know, you kind of keep it into yourself. That you, don't, you don't when you're not out there, and you bottle it in, you're gonna try to self you know cure yourself. That self you inflict. Know, yeah, and then, so and that's when you start doing that kind of punishment to yourself. So I think I think that has a lot to do with this is not not being able to speak to someone, and when like uh, Fernando was saying like a lot of his uh, the people that he trains, uh, his clients. They're really close to him. I'm pretty sure you might you might get calls like that. I mean, every once in a while, like, hey, man, I'm just feeling down now. Oh yeah, you know, I, I, I get a, I get a lot of messages. Hey, I need some motivation. But me, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not very kind. Yeah. You know. So, but they, yeah, they'll tell you. You know, they, I mean, but all for a good for a good reason. Yeah. It's all out of love, you know. So I, I mean, I, I, I tell them how it is. You know, I can tell them like, oh, everything's gonna be okay. You know. Wake up tomorrow, it's a new day, you know. Him. Yeah, I can do all that, you know, yeah. but I, I don't. I don't. I could tell them they can keep crying, feeling sorry for each other and stay where they're at, or they can climb a bridge, get over it, and just keep moving. Keep moving. Because the world's going to keep going up with or without you. It's going to keep spinning. You're either going to stay stuck and watch the world or spin with it, yeah. you know. So, and that's what I tell them. And they all know how I am, you know. So some of them are even scared you know, to tell me anything. So instead of telling me, they just do it. You know, yeah. they just do it. So, yeah, it's just, it's cause there's no, there's no, there's no reason to sugarcoat. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Do you get a lot of, um, a lot of quitters? A lot of people that sign up and oh, they're yeah. all motivated and then they just uh, that, drop what, out of uh, the, you know. What was it? F- a couple of weeks ago, I posted, I posted something about. It was on my story, so it, it wasn't. It was just a simple quote, basically saying, "What happens when that first day motivation is gone?" Everyone's motivated the first day. What happens weeks later when it's gone? What are you doing? Right? Yeah. Are you are you, are you putting your foot on the brake or are you putting your foot on the gas and keeping going? Can you still keep that motivation when it's not there? You know, many people can't. You know, they're all hyped up. Oh man, I'm ready. Let's do this. Let's do this. Kind of like driving. This is exactly how I like to describe it. It's like driving to Vegas with your buddies. Yeah. You guys are excited. Let's go. Let's go. Two and a half hours. Like, mm. yeah. that's <laughs> exactly there, yeah. how this is. You know. Yeah. yeah. So how how do you how do you stay up the whole four hours? You know how how do you keep that excitement going? Well, I I think that's the question that a lot of people are are probably asking themselves and and are and listening to this podcast and viewing it are probably saying is how do I get out of it? How do I go over that speed bump? Yeah. You know. I like my 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 best answer is to like to always remember why you started, and people tend to forget why. You know, they start looking at how far they have to go instead of how looking at where they're at, you know, taking it day by day. And I tell them, I repeat this over and over and over. It's a marathon and not a sprint. Everybody wants a sprint. Boom. This isn't a hundred meter dash. You know, you, this is a lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Once you can put that in your brain, that it's a lifestyle, then you're going to start accepting it. You're going to start accepting those slow days, Right. You're gonna start accepting those 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 um the days where you fall, where you start rethinking what am I doing? What am I doing? You know, I only lost one pound out, and then they start feeling sad. They want to lose ten pounds. You know, like no, you lost a pound. You know how much a pound is? It's a lot. Yeah. You know, so that that that's the best way to kind of keep people going. Cause yeah, it it 
we're humans. Yeah. We can't be excited every day. Right. You know? So, but that's why those check-ins for people keeps them going on Fridays because they're excited. Right? They're excited to check in and give me their good news. I lost weight. I'm, they're happy. So now they're going into the next week excited and ready. You know, and I tell all of them, don't let the weekends mess you up. Oh, yeah. You, you know, you checked in today. Don't do nothing on the weekend that I wouldn't do, yeah. you know, because it happens. They oh, check yeah. in. They lost five pounds, and then the weekend comes, then Monday comes. Oh, man, I didn't do good on the weekend. I ate this. I ate that. And who told you to eat that? Nobody told you to eat. You're grown. Yeah. You know, that's your fault. Yeah. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Why are you feeling sorry for yourself? Why are you crying? Like George Lopez, why are you crying? Why are you crying? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that that's the reality of it. It is. We all have a choice, you know, so that's their fault. And I, I make sure they, 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 they understand that, Yeah. you know, but. um. Well, it definitely starts from here then. I mean, it's it's all mental. It I mean, is. You, anybody can work to it and, and lift up to a certain amount of weight and work out. No, but it's it, all here. Exactly what I tell people. I can give you all the motivational speeches in the world. I can guide you to the water. I can give you everything you want, right? But if you don't want to do this, you're not going to do it. You're going to have to want to do it, you know? Because, yeah, you, there's only so much you can tell somebody. You can have the whole world sit this one person down and everybody talk to this person one by one by one by one, hoping somebody reaches out to that person, right? Yeah. But it's going to go in through one ear and out the other unless they allow themselves to say, you know what, enough is enough. I want this. I'm going to make it happen no matter what, you know. Yeah. That's something I learned on my own. As growing up, um, like I said, I didn't, I didn't grow up with parents. So um, everything I did, I would get in trouble. People would try to talk to me. There was no getting through to me at all, you know. So that that's what I learned is that. If I needed to make this change, you know, so everyone, if they want it, they're going to need to make that change on their own. Because you can't, you, you, what does it say? You can take a horse to, you know, to the water, but you can't force it to drink. Yeah. You know, so that's just with humans, you know, they're just going to have to want it at the end of the day. Yeah. And if they quit, then that means they never wanted it. It was only a thought, you know, they thought they wanted it. Yeah. They never really wanted it. Yeah. yeah. So, um, like on Instagram, you have many 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 followers right how we, how we said earlier that people don't don't believe it and i see like on your post you post before and after pictures you know people won't believe it unless they see it you know how do you deal with you kind of have like this reputation to uphold you know what i mean um how do you deal with that how do you stay positive Cause I'm pretty sure you get, oh, that's fake, or it's oh, yeah, photoshopped, or yeah. or it's steroids, or, or or you know all that stuff. I mean, I get I get people that yeah they'll they'll tell them I I hear from other people oh, he looks like that because of steroids or oh, his clients this this and that you know, but at the end at the end of the day, I'm posting on my story when I wake up when I'm doing my cardio I'm posting all my meals, so I, I pre I'm pretty much leaving the blueprint. For everybody to see mm -hmm. with my clients and with myself so they can see what it takes you know it takes a lot of work it takes a lot of dieting it's all diet the majority of this is diet you know so if you're not willing to diet no matter what you take i don't care what you could buy the most expensive steroid in the world right if you're not dieting you're, you're not going to see the results you're, you're trying to aim for but not only that it takes time years to get the, the 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 physique or whatever you're trying to obtain it takes time man consistent time and that's what i learned over these two and a half years since i started this there hasn't been one day where i haven't been time off it's been everyday grind for the last two and a half years and that's where i've been able to pretty much get the physique that i have now yeah you know and everyone who's been following me over those last two and a half years they've seen that they've seen the change you know that's due from dieting a, a dieting well, yeah do you notice, did you notice a big difference from the time you started up to the time you met your coach? Your oh, yeah. I mean, my, my, my body wasn't changing at all, hmm. whatsoever. I was, um, what do you call that? I was buff fat, you know? Hmm. Yeah. I had a little muscle. I had chicken legs. Sorry. I had chicken legs. I would work them out. I couldn't lift heavy, but they would never grow. And my upper body would grow. But that was because I was holding fat, you know, so... 
What do they? What do they call? What do they nickname that? Um, I think they call it the power belly. Power belly. Is, it, is, that, is that what it's called? The muffin have, top. Like, no, muffin not the muffin top. top. It's where you're like, oh, where you got that, where your abs are just huge. They look like a big cake, but you got the full definition, the, the six oh, yeah. packs and all that. I think they call it the power belly. Yeah. I don't know. I thought that. No, I, I didn't about. even have that. Yeah, not even no, that. No. It was just all right here, shoulders, everything. Arms. Yeah, no legs. It's chicken legs, you know. <laughs> but um. Yeah, it wasn't until I finally started feeding it the right foods day after day after day, two and a half years later, we're at where we're at. You know, now we have a more symmetrical physique, um, more portioned spots that were small and they're filled out now. So and that's what my clients see, you know, yeah. that well, the ones that want to see it and want to accept, OK, this is going to take time, you know. So, I mean, I've had clients now for consistent clients for about two years three years four years um that they're doing you know they're doing their own obviously they're not competing but they're dieting they're changing their bodies in their own way you know they everyone is goes at their own pace yeah you know so they see it you know um because it's easy to get a quick fix you know i can i can make you drop 20 pounds in a month you know and then after that, what? What are you, are you going to continue, or are you just you're going to be cool with those twenty pounds and then gain them again? Yeah. You know, so um, it just yeah. If, if people are willing to turn it into a lifestyle, then they're going to see their bodies change the way that they know they can change. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's my problem. Like the last two years, I've been uh, dropping weight, and it just fluctuates like this. You know, I dropped the weight 20, 35, 40 pounds. You know, and uh, th- after I'm done and I, I, I met my goal. I'm like, all right, let's celebrate, bro. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Go to Lucille's or whatever. Go to go get some of my wings and beer. And I'm back at it again. And it just fluctuates. Don't so celebrate. Now, well, I, I know, but you know, <laughs> beer and wings. But that that's my you know, that's my biggest thing is that I'm not taking it serious. You know, yeah. I'm not. I, I'm just I I dropped the weight and it's most of the time it's for like a contest or a competition that we're doing and I gain you know. Uh, that happens all the time too. I get a lot of clients, hey, I'm doing this weight loss challenge at work. There you go. You know, I need to drop this much pounds. I mean, I, I can do that, no problem. Yeah. You know, but the thing is, what are you going to do after that? Right. right. You know? And yeah, the majority, I mean, 60% of the time, 70, that they just, they're done. Yeah. You know? So, um, like with me, I get a lot of new clients, you know? And it's, um, just say out of 10 new clients that I sign up, one sticks, you know? And then one that one stays year after year, and then in the midst of all that, I'm getting new clients, and then one more sticking, you know. So I have my clients that have been with me, and and through the the, the the crowds, you know, coming in, coming out, coming in, coming out. Yeah. Um, Mostly by word of mouth or like your social media. Social media, word yeah. of mouth, yeah. yeah that's mm-hmm. cool. But um, but I I I mean I would prefer everybody, you know, continue with it. Right. But yeah. in reality, yeah. It's just too much for people to 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 do every day, you know. That's what they see is every day, and they get lazy, and they want to do whatever. Or the weekend comes, you know, and then Monday comes, or like, I'll go tomorrow. I'll go tomorrow. Next thing you know, they disappear. Yeah. You know. Yeah. What would you say to the people that that say, "Well, you know, it's easy for you to say because you know you 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 weren't overweight. You're you know." You were thin. That's a good question. It's it super easy, but not, I'm I'm super fat. You know, <laughs> well, trying to lose weight. Me, it's I was me. I was skinny and I was overweight. You know, so I've been there. I've been in there, just those situations. I've been in a lot of people's you know shoes. You know, so to get where I'm at, I had to overcome all that. So they can't use that card on me. And if they do, then I I have stories for days. Mm-hmm. You know, for every excuse that they have, I've been through. You know. Um, Loss in the family or depression, suicide, anything, suicide, drinking, drugs, any excuse you have, I've probably been through it, you know, and I chose to overcome that to get where I'm at, you know, so anyone that wants to come and ask, talk to me about me, I'm I'm open, you know, because we all go through something, Mm -hmm. you know, but but I've been in their shoes, you know, so it's, it's nothing that I haven't tried or whatever, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So again, it just goes back to... Making excuses. Yeah, you right? make excuses, excuses for yourself. Yeah, you you got you got to own up to, you got to own up to it. Yeah, you know, and if you're not willing to own up to it, then yeah, you're not gonna get anywhere. Right. You can't feel sorry for yourself. You can't have pity. No one else is gonna have pity. Right. You know, now no one's gonna do the work for you. You gotta want it. Yeah, mm. definitely. Are you in um, 
competition season right now. Yeah. With with next month coming up in Vegas. Yeah. Yeah. And so I started in February. What is uh what is your your diet consist of? Oh well, man, right now out of my seven meals, I'm eating fish for five. Seven a, a day. Yeah. Seven and meals a day. Out of those seven, five meals are fish, fish and fish. veggies. <laughs> Damn. Damn. No chicken, huh? No, no chicken. Just no, fish. Nah, no chicken. No one meal's turkey, the other are fish, and then in the morning it's just my shake with the uh, baby cereal, protein, and egg whites with a tablespoon of peanut butter. Damn. Uh, I so, can't have oatmeal because my it affects my stomach. So oh, does it? Yeah. Is that like the whole? Inf- some some people get in, in the inflammation it, with it, certain foods. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So me, asparagus, onions, avocado, almonds, all that messes my stomach up. Really? Yeah. Mm. It gets bloated, and out of the bathroom, you know. So yeah. yeah. So you know, like they say, um, you know, working out it it is eighty percent uh foods, twenty percent working out, right? Yeah. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. It's always been that way because yeah. I've heard, I've heard it for years. That's all you hear. That's I, I'll tell people every day. You could live in the gym, you can live on that treadmill, you know, like a like a hamster, running and running and running and running and running and running, right? But once you're off, you go back to your food. You can go back to the treadmill, running and running, hoping for change, right? And nothing happens. It's like insanity, mm-hmm. doing the same thing over and over and over, expecting different results, but you get nothing. Why? Because you're not changing what you're eating, and people, they can't, they can't process that. Oh, I gotta eat that much food. How am I gonna drop weight if I'm eating five times a day, six times a day? You know, they just, it, 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 it blows them away. Yeah. You know, so what do they do? They go to, they go do shakes, they go do surgery, they go do pills, they whatever, starve themselves. Go on salad diets, go on fruit diet, whatever, you name it, they tried it, right? They get their quick fix, and then what happens when they introduce food again? Back you know, to normal. Back to normal, right? Why do that to yourself? When you can keep a steady diet, which involves carbs, fats, your proteins, right? People are scared of carbs. Pe- carbs are your best friends, man. If you know how to utilize carbs, you can gain weight with carbs, and you can lose weight with carbs, right? So... When you decide, all right, I want to have some cheat weekend or whatever, it's not going to affect you so much because you've already been eating carbs as opposed to somebody who's been starving themselves for a month and then, boom, the weekend comes and, bam, they blow up. And then they go back to eating food. I already gained the weight back. Might as well gain, gain some more, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So people get the misconception. My clients see, oh, I'm supposed six times a day. I'm just eat the food. When you check in next week, you'll thank me later. Yeah. Oh, man, I can't believe I lost four pounds. I'm eating so much. The more you eat, the more you lose. The more you eat, the more you gain. The, the, it's just how you do it. Yeah. What I tell people, it's one thing to eat healthy and one thing to know how to eat healthy. Too many people eat healthy without knowing how. They'll go work out and then boom, they'll at Jamba Juice having a shake full of sugar. They'll go work out, bam, go get a parfait or Aussie, or the Aussie bowls, you know, oh, full yeah. of sugar, full of carbs. You know, oh, I'm healthy. No, no, man. What That one meal is whole calorie day for a, for a whole day you it know mess up your workout everything you know you got to portion it you got to portion it people eat once or twice on the average you know yeah. average so they'll have their big meal at night they'll stop eating at six they'll stop eating at seven so now at this point they're starving their bodies seven eight p.m nine p.m ten p.m eleven p.m twelve one two three four five six a.m seven a.m eight a.m they're not even eating breakfast 9 a.m., 10 a.m., 11, oh, it's lunchtime at work, bam, their first meal. So from 7 until lunchtime, basically their metabolism shut down. Now they finally get that one meal, right? And then on average, they don't eat again until they go home. So what their bodies do, it holds on to as much fat as they can from that meal so that they don't starve. And that's why people don't get hungry because their metabolism so shut down mm-hmm. that they're not hungry, right? So how do you expect to lose weight when you have that one little salad for your lunch, Oh, I'm healthy. I'm going to go home. I'm going to have a little banana, a little apple with some water. Your body needs more. It needs more more food to fuel and to keep the metabolism running. I don't believe in eating every two to three hours. I know you guys probably hear that. Yeah. You need to eat every two to three hours. Um, I don't I don't tell my clients eat every two to three hours. Everyone has different schedules. You yeah. know, I have RNs. I have hairstylists. I have barbers. I have call them construction workers so you're gonna tell me to tell this guy to take a break just so he can eat every two hours no 
You know, people have lives. Right. They need to do what they need to do. So I just tell them, eat these many meals before you go to bed. You know, oh, I can eat before bed? Yeah. Keeps your metabolism running. Yeah. When you're sleeping, now your metabolism's running. When you wake up, you're going to wake up hungry. Have your breakfast right away when you wake up, you know. Or do your cardio, then have your breakfast or meal one. Wow. Now, you know, what? going back to your, you had mentioned about his competitions, um, I did want to ask you, your fir- what are your? Do you remember your first competition ever? Yeah, that you did. That was two, two and a half years ago. My first. So it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't that long ago. Yeah. What was it? Was it uh, here local? No, San Diego. San Diego. Yeah. And how did that go? I mean, it was. It was nerve wracking, you know. Yeah. You, you're practicing for something, week after week, you know, and then finally the lights hit you, boom, you know, you get you get shocked like a like a deer in a headlight, you know. Yeah. But um. I mean, I, you you have fun with it, you know. You 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 reminisce on everything you went through All to get training, to that point. Everything. Eating. That first prep was hell for me. Um, I was eight weeks into it. Was a sixteen week prep total, so four months. Eight weeks into it, I remember I I threw my back out at the gym. And um, some guy was recording me. I still have the video. Some guy was recording me, and he's talking to me. And I'm lifting, I'm deadlifting, you know. And as I'm setting it down, I feel my back just, boom. I'm like, crap. And I've hurt my back before, so I, I knew it was it was done. Yeah. So I remember I sat on the bench, and I laid down. And I just, I remember waking up, and this guy's still talking to me about diet. Huh. <laughs> and I'm like, what the heck, man? Are you still talking? <laughs> and I'm dripping sweat, you know. Yeah. And he goes, what? Did you, did you just go to sleep on me? I'm like, Dad, I think I passed out. Yeah. And I was stuck on the bench for an hour, you know? So I threw my back out. I went to the ER, and then I'm like, man. So my whole life, you know, I, I'm, I was always used to giving up or used to quitting. Yeah. So I, I felt at that, at that point, it was a test. Am I going to keep going, you know? So even my coach told me, he goes, hey, if we need to push the show back, we can. You know, the doctor said... This is going to take you two, three months to recover. I wouldn't advise you to keep compete, you know. Yeah. So I was heartbroken. I'm like, man, it was, is this the universe trying to tell me something or is this a message from God, you know. So I was in crutches for the whole week, just pissed, mad, you know. I'm like, man, what am I going to do? But I still dieted. I was dieting the whole week just in case, you know. You stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. Yeah. So that that Sunday to Monday, I woke up. I'm like, you know what? Screw this, man. I threw the crutches down. I went to the gym, and I I kept going. So for the last eight weeks, I had the worst back spasms. My fiance had to wake up at 4 a.m. with me just to get me out of bed so I can get on the treadmill because I couldn't get up for the life of me. Damn. I was stiff trying to... There was times where I fell back on the bed, and then my back blew out again, you know? But I... I had I had that desire to finish, yeah. commit to finish. Most people would have been. Well, yeah, a, a, anybody, anybody in the, in the right mind yeah. would have just said, "All right, I'm gonna take some time off. I'm gonna recover." But my thing is, if 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 I took that time off, I probably wouldn't be where I'm at now. I probably would have never done that competition, and I would have probably said, "Screw it," you know, that's it. But yeah, no, I I finished, you know, I I took fifth place out of twelve guys. You know, so I was very emotional after the show, just going through that whole thing, you know, yeah. being in crutches, hurting myself, people saying, oh, you shouldn't do it. It's not safe. Um, but I didn't give up, you know, so my clients seen me not giving up. So that helped them. Like, man, this guy's serious. This guy has a broken back pretty much, and he's he's still in there, yeah. you know. And that's how everything started after that, that injury. So I think that injury was a blessing, man. To be honest, yeah, blessing. It, yeah, you know, it, 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 a lot of people they 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 f- they fed off of that. Mm-hmm. They're like, "Dang, dude, this guy can do that. I can do that." That's cool. You know, so people were seeing it on Instagram, um, on everything. And then the next year, I competed again. Um, the same competition. The same. Um, well, this one was in L.A. Okay. You know, so my thought process was, I gotta stay healthy. I'm gonna avoid injury. If I can do that, I can give a hundred percent. So the whole the whole time, I mean, I was it was good, you know, the dieting. Um, so the first show was in April, and I I happened 
I happened to win my class. I took first, and I was like, "Oh man, what the heck? You know, this is this is pretty good." I was happy. Mm-hmm. So then, all the first place winners they go up against each other, you know. And then um, I didn't end up winning the overall that day, which was fine. I took first. I was happy. Yeah. I still had to get ready for another show four weeks later. So that's I couldn't even enjoy the win. But that day, I took first place in in, in that class. I took first place in the novice division for bodybuilding, and I took third place. So I had three medals that day. I was I was on cloud nine. Nice. You know. Yeah. But I I, I couldn't enjoy it because I still my mind was focused on the next show. Right. Yeah. So then the next show came. Um, I won again, and then I'm going for the overall. I'm like, man, this is I can't believe this, you yeah. know. And yeah, sure enough, I won the overall that day. Nice. You know, so. To to accomplish all that in, in in a short amount of time, I I knew that was this this is for me, you know. I I did the right thing by not giving up. Yeah. For the first show, you know, um, because yeah, the the diet for the shows, man, oh, they're grueling, you know. So imagine having having back issue, training a bunch of clients on a daily, and then on top of that, the diet. When you're on low carbs, you have no energy. Your mind's so spaced out. You can't. There's just times where you just don't want to do. No, you just don't have the energy for it. Right. Where do you dig deep for that? You know, with the injury, with the where, where, where do you find it? You know, and I, I, I don't, I don't know who I was that year. I was a whole different person. Yeah. You know, but I mean, I, I thank God for, 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 for putting me through that, because I yeah. wouldn't be where I'm at now, able to overcome a lot of things. You know, but it, I think it that 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 specific year was basically just to sum up my whole life, you know, to to build me who I am, you know, because yeah. I said I was always giving up. I was always feeling sorry for myself. I was always blaming people. So at that time and point, it was just like, all right, I can't blame anybody but myself. I'm going to push forward. I'm going to keep going, and I'm going to get through this. Yeah. Regardless, if, I don't, if I'm don't, i not 100%, I'm going to give it my all, and I'm not going to give up, you know, because what does giving up lead to? Always giving up anything you do in life. If you give up points... You're gonna build that um, ongoing habit, and you're gonna always give up. You're not right. gonna know how to how to overcome anything, you know. So if you're able to overcome something big like that, I think everything else you're, you're gonna you're gonna start building better habits, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It's a matter of giving yourself small goals to overcome them, and then just to build up that that confidence ball, you know. Right. Well, right. What's your what's your what's your end game? What's the ultimate goal for you? Um. Other than the pros, because I know that's where right. you're leading to, because you know um, for the well, USA's, right? I actually, I posted something today. It's funny, you guys are you guys are on, man. Like these questions, <laughs> are, they like, they go with stuff that I'm posting, you know. Yeah. But um, today I posted a picture about my vision. Mm-hmm. What 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 do I vision? And I did a lot of messed up stuff in my past. I've harmed a lot of people. Um, I put a lot of bad karma into the world growing up, you know, just because of how I was raised, you know. Um, so for whatever reason, God decided to give me a second chance or multiple chances, you know, the grace of God, it's good. Um, those two and a half years doing this, I've been able to encounter a lot of people. So I feel like he's using me to give back to the world for everything that I did, you know, kind of like good karma. Yeah. So it, it's not too much competing. I, I, I have a passion for helping people. I have a huge passion for it. So seeing people smile, seeing people change their lives, it helps me forget about my past and everything that that, that, that I did, you know. So it's it's putting good karma back into the world, you know, just just to kind of delete any bad memories that I had from before. So so my envision, what my my bigger picture in all this is just to keep trying to change as many people as I can on a daily, you know. So and it's happening now. I'm 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 really 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 surprised at how big of an impact I have on the community. Not just in the city, not just in the state, different parts around the world. The world, it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. I, I never in my mind when I started training that I think it would get to this point, you know. But I'm not asking questions. I'm just doing. Yeah. You know, I'm just doing, and that 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 that's basically my 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 end game. You know. Yeah. Any plans on like your own gym? Well, I had my own gym. Mm. Yeah. Um, a few years ago. Well, with a partner of mine, you know, but we, we, we went our different ways and I left and then I started focusing more on my competing. Um, but I, I think down the line when the time is right, without a partner, I'm going to 
open up a gym. Yeah, because my, my clientele where it's at now, I mean, it's ready for its own gym, but I, I'm just, I'm waiting for the right time, you know, for that. Well, I'll tell you, it sounds like you have everything going for you right now. Your, your mind is, it's set. You're, you're, you're determined. You have the followers. You have people there ready to go, and they're committed to you just as much as you're committed to them. And, I mean, I don't see where you can go wrong there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, congratulations with, with everything that you're doing. Yeah, it, 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 I'm, 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 I'm surprised, you yeah. know. Um, so with, with, you just had, with the work ethic, that's all I can keep doing is just keep working, keep working, keep working. You know, I'm a workhorse, man. Yeah. You know, I don't take no for an answer. I figure things out, you know. So whatever comes my way, I don't look for an excuse. I just get it done, you know. So I'm, I'm just going to keep going that way, going in that direction. Um, and then if something comes up, something has come up. Um, for the the gym that that I had, mm -hmm. um, he's actually trying to sell it right now. Um, so it's in the air, you know, it's in the air. Right, right now, my main focus is July. Yeah. For the USA's, yeah. so to add something more on top of that, I'm gonna lose my focus. Right. And for some, for a show that big, I I need to my my mind needs to be in that yeah, 100%. hundred yeah, yeah. percent. So I told him in August we'll talk. So you know. If it's in God's plan to get the gym back, I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna have it. It's That'll there. Happen. He told me he he's willing to, to work whatever he wants, because he's actually running for city council in Baldwin Park. Is he? Mm. Yeah, he has his own business. Um, he's a good guy, man. He's he he helped me out a lot. Yeah. In in this journey, um, and he's he's good people, you know. So I said we just we went into our own direction. My my felt like my life was going into the shows. So, but somehow came back so like i said we're just, i'm gonna leave it in god's hands if 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 it is will to to get the gym then we're gonna get it if not then they like said we're, we're, we'll wait until something comes yeah, yeah. you know so for for those that want to follow you on your journey and your destination where can they find you um I'm, I'm pretty active on ig man um my my username is mr olympia 626 yeah nice local Local, yeah. That's right. 66. Raised, raised in the San Gabriel Valley. That's nice. right. You know? Nice. I've been all over the San Gabriel Valley, man. Azusa, Covina, West Covina, yeah. La Puente, Glendora. I've been moving around, man. What, what high school did you go to? Northview, Northview? in Covina. Northview. Oh, okay. Yeah. Very cool. The Vikings. The Vikings, Vikings man. Yeah, yeah, good, yeah. Rest, good wrestling school. Good, yeah. Great wrestling yeah. school. Yeah. So yeah. I, 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 I learned some stuff from them. You they know? always kicked our ass, right? Uh, yeah, Covina Colts. Oh yeah, for oh, yeah. sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, like Fidel said, man, it sounds like everything is headed in the right direction for you, and, and it's cool. I mean, it's it's cool to know you, and I want to thank you for being on here, dude. Well, I appreciate you, you guys, story. man. Appreciate it. Man. Yeah, if, if anybody wants to talk to me about any personal stuff that that kind of help them put uh, help them go in the right direction, like I said, I've dealt with a lot of stuff in my life, um, a lot of dark stuff, you know, so. I'm not. I'm not shy to talk to anybody. They can reach out to me. Um, you know, I'll tell it how it is. What my experience is. I'm not. I won't hold anything back. They can talk to me. You know. Yeah. So, like I said, maybe I went through all that so I can start reaching out to people now. Yeah. You know, God's put that platform in front of me, so I'm gonna use it. I'm gonna use yeah. it, and 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 if anyone I can help to try to avoid um, drug addictions, any suicide, any alcohol, whatever the case may be. I've been through all that. Mm -hmm. I've dealt with it. You know. So. I can help, you know. I, yeah. I like that. I, I totally had that thought with with these uh, these few uh, suicides, celebrity suicides yeah. that took mm -hmm. that took place, and everybody's like, "Oh, here's this number. Here's this number." If you, if you're a celebrity, you have that status. Can somehow give your number or your yeah, you, personal. You use that platform. You know what I mean. Use that platform. And for you to say that, that's that's big, dude. That's that's cool. That's very honorable, man. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, Instagram. Mr. Olympia six two six. Yeah, we'll, we'll get it going, man. I said I'm not, I'm not shy to talk, man. If yeah. anybody wants to talk to me, don't, don't worry. Message me, and anything personal, man. I'm, that, that's what I'm here for, you know. Awesome. We awesome. can't, we can't help the world if we're not willing to open our mouths, you know. Right. Yeah. yeah. So why, 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 why does God give you a mouth, right? That's right. We're not here for yourselves. We're here for each other. Right. You know. So that that that's what I believe in. That's cool. And that's yeah. cool that that. Um, God turned your your mess into a message. Yeah, like well, it, be, the reason why I I'm very, I mean, I I'm, I don't want to say I'm a hypocrite. I mean, I I don't go to church how I should, but I was baptized in 2012. So when I was baptized, I found God, I found Jesus, um, and that's my foundation, you know. So I, right. everything that happens to me, I know it's coming from Him, 
anything that gets taken away that shouldn't be with me gets taken from him you know uh comes from him so um i'm not i don't take anything for granted you know anything that i get i'm very thankful you know anybody that i can help i'm very thankful you know so i don't i don't like to brag i don't like to boast i don't like to say none of that you know yeah. why because any of that can get taken like right. that right you know you just got to be humble be appreciative like i say anybody that needs your help you go help them go help them you know so i think that's why he's put me in this field i um, mean has given me that platform you know like say, it's, it's not just for me he's allowing me to enjoy what i love but in the midst of all that i'm encountering a bunch of people yeah. and that's what that that's the main important thing yeah. for for this you know what i mean definitely yeah definitely well once again man thank you for your time dude appreciate it thanks fernando <laughs> thanks a lot brother. yeah thank you guys all right that's man. It. cool that's a wrap that's nice. a wrap